to discuss the beginnings, the ultimate beginnings of things is to discuss the, 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 the metaphysics of something. You know, what does it mean that something must have a beginning mm -hmm. or, you know, or an end, you know, that you're talking about the nature of things that goes far deeper than the science of things. Because you can't get beneath or below or behind science to, to, to look in at the thing and, and ask and, and test well, what's the nature of that thing. Again, you're mm -hmm. dealing with a philosophical question here. Three, two, one. Welcome back to another Nerding Out with That Nerdy Catholic. As always, I am Seth Payne, That Nerdy Catholic. And we have back with us this week, John Mark Grodi, talking all about philosophy. We will be getting deep, philosophical, philosophizing, and uh, hopefully it'll be interesting. And, and uh, <laughs> Not to put too much pressure on you, but I'm expecting some real depth today. I think we got some good. <laughs> I'll try to. I'll try to uh, to do, to do that well. To get deep <laughs> enough for you. I've been a couple of interviews before where people have been like, "So, yeah, what is philosophy?" Like just super general. But we've got, a, I think, some good angles to get into yeah. it today. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. What do you want to start? Well, so uh, first, just to let you know, uh, if you want to know more about uh, John Mark, you can check out last week's episode where we really delved into who he was, where he came from. All that, all that good stuff, why he got into philosophy. And uh, as I said, there were a few times where thoughts just and questions just came to me, and I, and I wanted to save it for this week, because this week we're really going to delve as deep as we can into this length of an episode. You know, there's so much that we can't cover. But talking about philosophy and why philosophy is important, and just as a, a kind of preamble to let you know where we're going with this, one of the reasons that we wanted to have this conversation we've, that John Mark and I have talked about a few times is there is a plethora of videos on YouTube, blogs out there, and really in the world in general, there, there, there are so many people that are talking about science. And they will often say something in the lines of, well, you know, what I'm talking about right now, that this is science. And I don't want to get into something else. I don't want to get into like that meaning because that's philosophy and I don't do philosophy. Mm -hmm. Almost th thinking that it's a, a lesser, you know, you know, science is real. Philosophy is just the, all the things that we make up mm -hmm. to try and find meaning in our life. Real versus the feel. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that is uh, kind of the, the reason behind the conversation arriving today. Yes. And, uh, and so, uh, as we talked about last week, John Mark is in the final stages. And as I am want to continue to remind him, hopefully we'll finish at some point, his uh, master's in philosophy at the University of Steubenville. What do they call it when you're working on your academic program and you're doing like, I'm doing field, I'm doing the field work. <laughs> it's going to last for me for many, many years. I'm just, I'm doing the field research. <laughs> Are you uh, are you one of those lifetime students? Hey, I'll have time to write when I'm dead. I mean, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe, right? Uh, I, they have laptops in heaven, right? I'm not going to say what kind of word processors they have in heaven it, or in hell. I, I don't know what would <laughs> be in it'll hell be, would be. It'll be typewriters that do not have an <laughs> X. Keep sticking every time. Well, ah! they, there's no X and no Y. Yeah, there you go. That's right. So to start off, I want to talk a little bit about why philosophy is important, um, and. What is uh, just a brief history? What is a brief, <laughs> briefest history we can think of? A brief history of philosophy. Well, before we get there, okay. So, I mean, I wanted to say, you know, last time we were talking through a little bit of the story, one of the the first books my dad ever gave me that got me interested in philosophy, and I was blessed to have to receive a lot of kind of the intellectual life from my father. He gave me this book of this guy named Anthony, Doctor Anthony Rizzi, and the book was called Science the science before science. Mm -hmm. I don't remember much of that book because it was a long time ago. And at that time, most of it was pretty meaningless to me, um, but not meaningless. When you read a book that's far beyond you, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily pick up a lot of stuff consciously, mm -hmm. but you pick up stuff generally and sort of subconsciously. Um, and obviously in there in the title, um, the science before science, philosophy is the science before science. Mm -hmm. Now, it's before science in a, a few different ways, and we're going to talk about those today. It is the science before science historically in the sense mm -hmm. of 
before there was a specific, the physical sciences or biology or chemistry, there was just those people who were trying to understand the universe and the world around them, mm -hmm. and they were called the philosophers. Mm -hmm. And so there, it's the science before science historically, but it's also the science before science uh, logically and epistemologically. You know, it's the science upon which um, the physical sciences, the technological, biological, phys physical sciences that we understand, it rests upon them. Mm -hmm. um, our assumptions about the universe, our assumptions about how you think, our assumptions about the trustworthiness of thought and of logical, uh, you know, logical thinking and perception, those are all kinds of philosophical uh, presumptions that mm -hmm. we just absorb and most of us don't really examine. But even to do science rests on those. And then, but science is also the, the uh, philosophy is the science before science. Uh, also in the sense of to do the people who um, pioneered the physical sciences, which have been so um, successful, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. look at the technological world around us, what we're doing right here. They've been so successful, but they came out of the lives and the, the schools of thought um, of people who were philosophers first in the sense of people who loved wisdom. That's mm -hmm. what philosophy means. And so we're going to mm -hmm. talk about that too. Um, but I, I put down on our paper here, I love this meme that's gone around the internet that illustrates this uh, because people, they don't know what to do with science and philosophy. Mm -hmm. They do tend to think of uh, science as the reals and philosophy as the feels. But it's this great meme. I don't know if they have a picture here. But well, I, I, I'm sure we can we pop, can it, pop up. it up on the yeah. screen. So the meme basically says, you know, someone says, why does philosophy matter? And the person says, oh, I don't know. Why does science matter? Well, because science and the person cuts in and you're doing philosophy. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as you ask that question of why yeah. does it matter? Yeah. Um, why even do it in the first place? Why is it worth doing? Mm -hmm. You're not asking scientific questions. Science as yeah. we understand it, a scientific, a physically scientific question means something I can physically test mm -hmm. and experiment on. Well, even, even to look at it broader, yeah. anytime you ask the question why, because and it, science, you know, and, and I think it's really interesting when you when you look at um, someone explaining, you know, let's say the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, and if they say, why did this happen first? They're really saying how. Mm. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But when you when you ask why, you're you're assigning purpose to it. Mm -hmm. Where where studying studying physical phenomenon, you're not you're not looking at purpose. You're saying, well, how did this lead to this lead to this? Right. As soon as as you say why, yeah, you're assigning some sort of meaning or purpose to it. Yeah, it's that classic uh, Jurassic Park thing, right? You know, they were so busy asking whether they could do this, they didn't mm -hmm. stop to ask. No, no, did I have that right? Yeah, they didn't ask why. If they or could do if this, they, or whether, should they could should they do it? Should they do it? Yeah, they do it? yeah. it's a classic. Well, thing. should is still is is a why right. question. It's these it's these two very different uh, kinds of questioning. And one thing that people I think need to realize is that physical science covers such a narrow narrow range of human mm -hmm. experience. You know, much more of our human experience deals with stuff that can never really be dealt with in a physical scientific way. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and then to the degree that it's forced to do so, it's it's truncated. You know, our experience of being and being conscious and willing, and our experience of values, our experience of you know, thinking this stuff over here is good, that stuff mm -hmm. is evil. This mm -hmm. is helpful and beneficial. All that stuff are questions that you cannot explore scientifically. Mm -hmm. You know, like that that we should help people and be nice. But well, why? Right. Why is that? Why is that better and something else worse? Right. You can't. There's no experiment that you can run that proves that that's true mm -hmm. uh, or false because it's dealing with a kind of data, a kind of information, a kind of knowledge that is is it's just a, it's of a different order of knowledge. Yeah. And so, um, rather than uh, philosophy being something separate or beneath science, again, originally historically, philosophers were people who were asking all the big questions and one very narrow sub science of that mm -hmm. is very specific questions about the testable touchable feelable physical world yeah. and that's what we call the physical sciences um but historically uh it came out of um uh, people who were asking all kinds of questions about the universe mm -hmm. and of reality when you th and, think about one of the greatest and one of the worst discoveries in the last hundred years was the discovery of the splitting of the atom. Right. 
and you know Oppenheimer and Einstein and, and all the other scientists that were working on this didn't realize there, there's a great movie that I uh, watched a, a long time ago, but it's called Fat Man and Little Boy. Yeah. And it's all about the scientists that discovered the splitting of the atom yeah. that which led to the atomic bomb. Yeah. And it was <laughs> there are so many movies that are are meant to be very emotional, tug at your heart. But this movie, I, I remember I cried hmm. in that scene when when they when they all realized what it meant hmm. that what they were studying up to that point, it was just a, you know, I need to see if this is true to realize what it led to when when they saw the first atomic bomb test. Right. Um, and so that is a, you know, what happens when you focus so much on the how mm -hmm. and the what and not as, not enough on, on the why. Yeah, I mean, this stuff can sound to people, uh, you know, just heady and impractical, uh, that it's purely theoretical stuff. And they're right in a certain sense, you know, like it, it can sound like we're just goofing around, uh, under, trying to understand understanding, trying to talk about talking, reasoning mm -hmm. about reasoning, right? Um, but I, I, one of my favorite authors, G.K. Chesterton, that guy right there, um, he has this great chapter in uh, the book, What's Wrong with the World, where he's talking about the, the practical and the, the theoretical man. Mm -hmm. And see, the problem with, you know, we, we have this, this penchant, this uh, assumption that, well, we need, we need to stay, you know, practical and reasonable and uh, in the real world doing mm -hmm. real things. Well, the problem with the practical man is the practical man goes along the processes that have already been established. Mm -hmm. He follows the existing assumptions. He follows the status quo. Mm -hmm. He follows along with the current understanding of the universe. Mm -hmm. And that's fine when things are working. Yeah. But when things are not working, it's not the practical, but it's the theoretical man. It's the it's the mad doctor. It's the yeah. mad philosopher who could who steps back and says, Well, why are we doing this in the first place? Right. And in our society today, like we recognize on the one hand, okay, uh, on the the narrow a sliver of human knowledge that is the physical sciences and technology, it's been very successful. Like mm -hmm. we have wonders, we're surrounded by, by marvels. But increasingly, the rest of human knowledge, the stuff, the sciences before science, mm -hmm. about why this is important and what we should do with it and what the purpose of life is and what is right and wrong and all that kind of stuff, that's um, increasingly dying and we're seeing that in our culture we're seeing that in the arguments we're seeing mm -hmm. that in the violence we're seeing that in the cultural decay we're seeing that um in the inability of people with the slightest difference in temperament and belief mm -hmm. being unable to talk to each other we yeah. see that in the way that governments and businesses and the media are 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 using these technological wonders that we have to control us and to manipulate us and to mm -hmm. move us around and to make us angry at each other mm -hmm what to think about that and what to do about right. that and why it matters right. that's not a scientific question right well and and the the sad thing is that we're seeing that on all sides mm -hmm. and unfortunately it's not a you know we, we can't point and say well well this side is is just you know sheeple mm -hmm. and then this side is all the thoughtful people mm -hmm. i mean there there are thoughtful people but on on i think even on both sides but for the most part the the people that are are put out there that are very visible are seem to be at least the people that are saying well no this is true and you can't you're wrong mm. I'm right and you're evil or yeah maybe even stronger yeah yeah I'm yeah. right and you're an idiot um, you know? and, and you're not and, even worth listening to and, or yeah, to and, yeah and I'm not gonna yeah as you said you're not worth listening to mm -hmm. so I'm gonna tell you what's right and mm -hmm. you're just gonna accept it. Yeah, truth is increasingly treated as something that it's just so obvious. It's just so obvious what the truth is. And thus, you're such an idiot that why would we even bother talking? And it's like, yeah. well, no, that's not, uh, all of us are resting on, you know, a, a whole body of unexamined assumptions about mm -hmm. the universe. And again, the more that our knowledge has, our belief in truth and knowledge has narrowed to strictly physical, physical stuff, physical mm -hmm. sciences, the more rusty we've all become on even asking and being, having the right kind of heart and mind that can be open to these uh, deeper 
questions that de- that determine like what do we even what do we even make of all this stuff? Mm-hmm. How why is it valuable? What's mm-hmm. what's good about it? What is the purpose of it? Yeah. Um, and as we become rusty, we begin bad talking about it, and then suddenly we realize we're in a situation where the the really important questions, mm-hmm. um, the science before this these sciences. Uh, we, we can't have those conversations anymore yeah. and we're going to kill each other yeah. if we don't <laughs> figure well, that and, out. And, and yeah. as we were talking about last week, um, the, this philosophy of, um, you know, of being a nerd, mm. of nerding out, uh, one of the reasons that I, in, in preparing for and playing this, not this show it, itself, but mm-hmm. this whole series is this, there, there seems to be a dichotomy in, especially in, uh, the media places like YouTube and Facebook of one side saying, you know, well, we're doing science and the other side saying, well, we're doing philosophy and religion. Mm. And, um, as if, as if they're contradictory to each other mm. and you have, have one side saying, well, this is, you know, this is what science says and this is what I'm following. And the other side saying, well, this is what religion says and this is what I'm following. Right. And, and these are not worlds that that need to clash with each other, mm. and so one of the one of the purposes for this show is to is to look at people who are doing science, mm-hmm. um, doing philosophy, doing things that 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 really take a lot of thought mm-hmm. that people need to think through, but realizing that they're doing it with the worldview of someone that also has faith, mm. someone that is following this this faith this this religion. And seeing how and wrestling with how these worlds fit together and work together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone has a philosophy. Everyone is a philosopher. You're just either a good or bad philosopher, uh, a woke or unwoke philosopher. Mm-hmm. Because again, even if you think you're a, a person of science, I'm just a person of, of the science. Well, you, you come you come into that with all kinds of unexamined assumptions about the universe. You assume mm-hmm. that your your perceptions, your physical sensory perception perceptions, are trustworthy. You're making assumptions about the the logical, uh, your ability to extrapolate from um, a few a body of regularities in the physical universe to mm-hmm. to uh, patterns in the universe. You're making mm-hmm. assumptions about that. Like, why do you have faith that that just because something happens like this one day or many days that it'll happen again? Mm-hmm. And why do we assume that cause and effect is something to be trusted? Why do we? Those are all assumptions, um, and some of those assumptions are more or less important to. Um, our day-to-day life, but some of them, some of them really are um, at the base of our disagreements with other people. Our ability, our inability to interface with other people, is that we're arguing about physical phenomena or mm-hmm. like factual events, but what we're we're really disagreeing on is um, deeper questions of meaning. And mm-hmm. there is, they are focusing on different areas of human thought, but there really is a hierarchical relationship. It it it's not the case that you can form a base of sci- of physical scientific thinking and then on top of that build out some philosophical moral mm-hmm. beliefs. It comes the other way around. You have to ask yourself first, well, what do I think humans are? What do I think it means that humans have dignity and a right to life first? That's not something you can scientifically test for. Sorry, you mm-hmm. can't. You have to ponder that question and learn from other people uh, and come to an agreement about that in the society first. And then <laughs> you can decide scientifically uh, what to do with that information, what to do mm-hmm. with your information scientifically that you've discovered about the universe, you know, how to use things, how to manipulate things, how to understand the world around us. But that all is in the context of whatever philosophy you're bringing to the table. And again, if you've unexamined, you have an unexamined philosophy, it may be a bad philosophy. Mm-hmm. You may be bad at talking to people who are, are ever so slightly different than you. Yeah. And so you have to go back to the science before science. So, so maybe then the, 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 the beginning of a good conversation is to really just say, well, let's just look at the basis of our, our assumptions. Mm. Um, not starting with a, what are your wrong assumptions and what are my right assumptions, but what are our assumptions? Mm. Um, what, are, what is the basis of our, our philosophy? Mm. Uh, and say, you know, how can we, how can we have a conversation? You know, as you said, if you are just going off your assumptions and you're not realizing that they're based on some sort of a philosophy, um, then you are just going to continue to butt heads. Yeah, it leads to a lot of meaningless arguments. I think of, you know, in the Catholic sphere, uh, we're 
we're pro-life, that is to say we're anti-abortion. And a lot of the arguments around that issue with people who feel differently, they'll will be arguing around surface level questions like, mm -hmm. um, you know, the economics uh, and cultural issues surrounding marriage and um, and you know and, and sexual behavior and different things like that. But the reality is under underlying all that is our is different assumptions about the universe, mm -hmm. different assumptions about uh, right and wrong, different assumptions about the meaning and purpose of human sexuality mm -hmm. and marriage, different assumptions about well, what the heck does it mean to say that a person is a person? Mm -hmm. a different assumption about what that means in terms of what we owe to individuals. Like mm -hmm. there's not really any point of discussing the the surface level practical questions unless mm -hmm. if we're living in two different moral and philosophical universes, mm -hmm. we have to at least acknowledge, wow, like our philosophical and moral assumptions about the universe are just like wildly different. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can talk about those if necessary. Yeah. Or, I mean, maybe it, we can... It, May, or at least we can agree to disagree and saying, oh yeah, there's there's just not much point talking about what, up, this stuff up mm -hmm. here unless we tackle this. Or with our grave differences of the kind of universe, the philosophical yeah. assumptions we have in mind, maybe we come to a different kind of compromise of what to do about that because yeah. we recognize where the, the actual disagreement lies. Well, and, and if we can, going off that, that the, the pro-life, pro-choice argument, mm -hmm. um, if we can get down to the point where we're talking philosophy, mm -hmm. maybe we can, as you said, we can have a good conversation mm -hmm. and come to at least an understanding about why we disagree. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember one time a few years ago, I, I saw a debate, uh, a pro-life, pro-choice mm -hmm. argument, uh, uh, debate. Yeah. And the, the, the pro-choice person went first and um, just made some some really good arguments, some very, you know, some arguments that I would look at and say, well, that doesn't, ma that doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't agree with that. Or, but, you know, really made some good arguments about the, the bad side of ab 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 abortion mm -hmm. um, before making the arguments to support abortion. Mm -hmm. And wh when I heard her arguments, I thought, well, this, the, the other person, Who's arguing the pro-life side? There are some there are some good points that she made that he could really tag on and say, you know what, that's really great. Mm -hmm. Let's go off of that and let's look at where that leads logically. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, he didn't. Mm -hmm. He just said the you know the regular pro-life um, talking points, and mm -hmm. it didn't go anywhere from there. But if you can if you can have a conversation yeah. th where you understand that you're talking about your underlying philosophies, your underlying understandings of, of why you believe what you believe, then you can go somewhere from there. Yeah. But if you're just making the talking points. Yeah, there's no logical fallacies more frustrating than ones made by your own side. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're so irritating. <laughs> yeah. So, so then looking at all of the science out there, Look, looking at the, the people that are making these scientific arguments, what are some ways that we can, in our own lives, as we're, as we're taking all this in, how can we do philosophy correctly so that we can really understand what we're, instead of just taking in facts, because mm -hmm. it's not just, as you said, it's not just facts that we're dealing with. Mm. It's this, uh, these underlying philosophies. How do we watch something you know, like um, li like a scientific video on the Big Bang that starts off with uh, just really interesting facts, looking at the studies, looking at what we've learned so far, mm -hmm. uh, and then do philosophy. Actually, before before we go into that, yes. So one of this, these these sure, other people out there, Father George Le yeah. uh, very French, very French. Uh, not uh, not French at all, but uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> French Canadian. He, he, well, he, he's, oh, not he, French. he's not. Oh, French. he's not French. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. Um, well, wait, wait a minute. George Lemaitre. What is that? It's uh, it's, it's Dutch or it's, oh, it's, that it's, I don't. It, it's 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 not. He, he's not from. Not French. French. He's, he's not, not French. French. Okay, good. I, I'm blanking out right now. What country he was from? But, sure. Um, I I read a book recently. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting. Looking at his life and his work, and it was it was the title of the book was Father George Lemaitre and mm -hmm. Albert Einstein. Yeah. Is looking at how 
they interacted with each other yeah. over the years. But it was looking at it, it, Father La Mancha was the priest and astrophysicist that came up with the concept and the idea of the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. And he did it at a time when all physicists throughout the world had this idea of the universe as a, a steady state universe right. where it didn't have a beginning. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a, it was eternal. And he came along and not even for religious reasons, mm -hmm. but just in looking at the observations mm -hmm. of what they were starting to see with the movement of what they thought at the time were nebula, mm -hmm. they didn't even know at the time that there were other galaxies. Right. Um, that he started to formulate this idea that there was a, a beginning to the universe. Yeah. And there were a number of other physicists at the time that said, well, I can't, un I can't accept that, hmm. not because of the science behind it, but because they said, well, it felt too much like a creation story. <laughs> that, they're, that they had assumptions that they didn't want to break. They had an assumption that, they're, that, that you know, this physical only, mm -hmm. that this world is all that there is. Right. And any, anything that might say that there was a beginning was giving over to the possibility that there was a God that created it. Yeah. Well, because to discuss the beginnings, the ultimate beginnings of things is to discuss the, 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 the metaphysics of something. You know, what does it mean that something must have a beginning mm -hmm. or, you know, or an end, you know, that you're talking about the nature of things that goes far deeper than the science of things. Cause you can't get beneath or below or behind science to, to, to look in at the thing and, and ask and, and test well, what's the nature of that thing? Again, you're mm -hmm. dealing with a philosophical question here. Um, if we could, I'd like to just go back a little bit to when we say this philosophy is a science before science. There's, I mentioned there's kind of three aspects to that. Mm -hmm. I want to go through this a little bit because that, mm -hmm. that I think gives us a better place to then answer the question of like how we, like again, you're either a philosopher, you're, you're a philosopher, but either you're a good or a bad philosopher mm -hmm. in terms of yep. living this way. So, so how do we be a good philosopher? I think to understand that, we need to th you know, talk more about the relationship between these kinds of knowledge. And so mm -hmm. I didn't mention that the first way that, that philosophy is the science before science is mm -hmm. it, it's, it is so historically. You know, uh, it's attributed to Pythagoras, the Pythagorean theorem, mm -hmm. you know, the, the ancient Greek mathematician and, and philosopher was who kind of first came up with the name uh, philosophy. And it means phil philosophia. It means a love of wisdom. And so it, it's first and foremost a love. It's first and foremost a way of being, you mm -hmm. know, that you want to know, a desire to know, a desire mm -hmm. to understand, to go beyond maybe just what's uh, presented to you, what's told around you. Oh, the gods did this, whatever. Mm -hmm. or the lightning, that's just Zeus getting angry up there. Like to want to go be beyond and behind that and really understand how, why things are. And so historically, the philosophers were people uh, who were trying to understand the universe. And there wasn't really a distinction between, you know, f philosophy and religion and physical sciences and all the divisions that we now have. It was just philosophy. Um, and uh, eventually, you know, I think this is the briefest of, of <laughs> histories here, but eventually, you know, we, yeah, there were sub, uh, subcategories of philosophy and the uh, phys natural philosophy. Mm -hmm. was what we would call science, trying to understand specifically the actual physical universe, things mm -hmm. that are testable and that we can feel and touch. But that was just a subset of this whole search for understanding and for knowledge. Um, and what's interesting too here is that it's only, again, in very modern times that when we think of, most people think of philosophy nowadays, they do think of, okay, well, I went to college and there was the math department and the science department and the art department, and then there was the philosophy department. And philosophy is what happens in the philosophy department. Mm -hmm. And again, even that is a, is a, is a, is a real modern kind of weird phenomenon mm -hmm. where as if philosophy is sort of a category of thought amongst categories, mm -hmm. rather than philosophy being the underlying, the, the background desire to understand and to know that that itself is then divided into different categories of exploration and mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. To have it in one dusty uh, academic department of people who are writing philosoph philosophy papers that only other philosophy students will read mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and never could, never would, uh, that's actually kind of the weird phenomenon because mm -hmm. historically it was not so. Uh, philosophy uh, was this overall uh, desire to know, to understand. Um, and to the degree that we've lost that, we've lost... Uh, philosophia uh, in favor of academic philosophy is mm -hmm. that we've we've all lost this common understanding that it's it's the science before science it's the philosophy 
That is mm-hmm. the bridge between these different areas of human thought. It's how they interface. It's how the mathematicians can talk to the scientists and the scientists yeah. can talk to the to uh, people who are studying their uh, their their theology, their religious faith, or or the the scientists can talk with the artists. Well, yeah. they're recognizing that these are the thing that we're really interested in. Back behind it, we have questions that link it together. Mm-hmm. Why is it important? Where does yeah. this fit in human life? What is human life? What is the purpose yeah. of human life? Yeah. That kind of thing. Well, in last week at the 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 end of our episode last week, yeah, you know, I asked you what you nerded out about, and we, we started going into the whole idea of <laughs> language and what is yeah. what does it mean to be a nerd? Yeah, what does it mean to be cool? And that that really is the 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 whole basis of philosophy, and even thinking of the philosophy of the physical sciences. And th- thinking about what do you nerd out about, mm-hmm. um, if you love astronomy, mm-hmm. then you are going to want to know everything about astronomy, mm-hmm. not because you think you have to, but there's a love there yeah. for it. The love comes first. Yes. And and thinking about then how do we look at, in general, science yeah. from the light of philosophy? Well, even just to say, why do we study it? Mm-hmm. You know, it we can imagine a world where we are all just content living our lives and you know going around and you know planting food and eating food mm-hmm. meeting people where we don't care about the why mm-hmm. where we don't strive to to learn more about the world around us mm-hmm. but the fact that that there are people that have spent their entire lives you know you think about Especially when once someone gets to the level of uh, of the of a PhD in some area of science, mm. they are so focused that uh, on one even just one small topic within their area of study, like someone could spend their entire lives looking at the spectrographs of uh, stars, right? Um, not because they they have to. But because they love the subject so much yeah. that they want to understand every small minutia about stars, and mm-hmm. then it can keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper into yeah. it. Well, what does PhD mean, right? I mean, Doctor of Philosophy. <laughs> That's what it means. Uh-huh. You know, because like the the understanding there is that it's not just that. Oh, I went and learned a bunch of science facts, mm-hmm. but that no, I I understand. I really delved into this area, and I also see where it fits in the whole. Mm-hmm. You know, our understanding even of PhD has fallen, fallen far in in the day and age because again we 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 see like the more nitty gritty we get into an, an area, the more disconnected it is from other areas of thought. Rather mm-hmm. than being a person that no, my learning has brought me into seeing it in context, seeing it as part of the whole. So I, I'm actually more aware of where this yeah. fits in the whole body of human yeah. wisdom. Well, and and I and then I think that could be a really great place as a beginning for for dialogue mm-hmm. to say uh, instead of you're following science and, and I'm and I'm following you know religion and philosophy so you're wrong and I'm right mm-hmm. to start off to say what are you studying mm-hmm. why why do you love studying that I, I think it's an I think that's amazing you know this this phrase that I keep going back to is all truth is God's truth whether it's scientific or philosophical or or religious, mm. all truth is, is true. Mm. God does not create untruth. Mm. So it's not like there's untruth over here and truth over here. I mean, there is untruth, but anything that is true yeah. is true for everyone and in every situation. So, yeah. so you can look at someone and say, even if they don't want to think about philosophy or religion, just to say, why do you, why do you study what you do study? Mm-hmm. Why do you love that? Yeah, that every every study of truth has this has this underlying seeking of wisdom and seeking of of truth in this greater understanding. Yeah, let's talk about truth for a moment. So my second sense of which philosophy is a science before science is mm-hmm. that it's it's a science before science logically and epistemologically. So when we ask when we say that something is true, like what do we mean by that? Mm-hmm. You know. Um, Aristotle, I think, was the one who who defined truth as saying ab- about that uh, which is that it is, and saying about that which is not that it is not. Um, but we again tend to limit truth to what is to what is uh, 
physically testable mm -hmm. and intersubjectively verifiable. Mm -hmm. So like the thing we're, we're hesitant, we become weirdly hesitant to call anything, not just true or false, but even a matter about which truth or falsity is even a meaningful concept, mm -hmm. only about things that are physically testable, you know, so physical scientific hypotheses, but about th anything that's, that's not in that small, very narrow realm of human knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, the realm of value or mathematics or logic or, or morality or aesthetics, you know, what, mm -hmm. uh, what beauty and ugliness are. We, we would tend to say that not only are opinions of that sort, um, not true or false, that it's that not even matters that there can be a truth or falsity mm -hmm. for, that the only, th the only uh, meaning to the, the, the word truth is things that are physical and scientific and, and testable in that very narrow sense. And again, that itself is, you guessed it, a philosophical assumption. Yeah. Yeah. And the problem is, is again, it's, it's this default assumption of our modern world. And because it's a default assumption, it's never examined it's just that this is uh, it's just treated as true, but what, where's the evidence for it? Yeah. Can it be scientifically? No, it's just a philosophical opinion, and it may be wrong. Yeah. It may be a false assumption. It's certainly not a historical uh, assumption. Like for most of human history, um, not dumb people, like the smartest people of human history have not necessarily accept, accepted that assumption. Mm -hmm. And we haven't thrown off that assumption because we discovered some scientific hypothesis that disproves it. It's just because it's not in fashion yeah. in our current modern world. Yeah. Um, and, and what most people think of when they think of a philosophical conversation or a philosophical argument, mm -hmm. they, th they think more of a, um, an argument of, of purpose or mm -hmm. meaning or, you know, almost, you know, going into, you know, theological or religious arguments. Yeah. But one of the, I've, I've seen a number of videos recently talking about mathematics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you would think that someone that loves to do science would say, well, of, you know, especially looking at, you know, astronomy, the physics, and you know, where those fit together and, and astrophysics, that, um, that math is such a, a part of it, mm. that, well, of course, there is something called math. But there's there are people that would say well the the question is is math real or is it is math something that we just made up yeah, what does real and, mean man <laughs> and 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 the argument against math being quote real is that well i can't measure i can't look at two plus two equals four i can't measure that physically uh -huh. there 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 isn't any there isn't any instrument mm -hmm. that i can look at and say okay this is showing me math. Right. Um, and so therefore, you know, math must be a construct, something that we created just to make sense of the world. Or that we discovered in the world. Yes. Yeah. But the but the fact that that math makes sense of everything, yeah. Every field of science goes back in some way to math to say that the so there are some there's some formula in math that makes sense of what I am measuring and looking at and studying. Right. But math is itself not something that is scientific, scientifically testable. It's something outside of, of space and time. Even to, again, to ask the question, is math real? The way that, that it's normally asked, it, it, it betrays a philosophical assumption because what it means by real, the way I hear that question, receive that question, is that is it something that's in the universe and thus you know, ultimately testable, I can ultimately, I'll be able to put all of math under a microscope and figure it out. Um, and again, the assumption that it is, the assumption that that's, but by real, we mean only those things that fit in that category. Mm -hmm. That itself is a pretty narrow philosophical assumption. Um, you know, there are things in the universe that we discover and that we discover, that we discover features and regularities of our universe. Grass tends to be green. Mm -hmm. our planet. I mean, like, and we know all the chemical and biochemical reasons why it is, but we could imagine things being different. The constants of the universe, you know, the, 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 the nuclear forces, all we could imagine all the, the, the parameters of this video game that we're living in being different mm -hmm. in such a way that it made uh, grass blue. There's nothing logically inconsistent about grass being blue. It's just that the way our universe set up, grass is green. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you can't imagine a universe where two plus two does not equal four. Mm -hmm. You can try to imagine that, but it doesn't actually work because the logical relationship between the logical concept of two and the logical concept of two, two. <laughs> and the logical concept of four, 
you can't imagine that being different mm -hmm. because that's a different kind of knowledge. It's a different kind of truth. Yeah. Now they're both real, yeah. but they're real in a very different sense. Yeah. One is real in the universe and one is real in a way that goes beyond any particular universe. It's a universal. It's something yeah. that is that simply must be. And so, again, this question of like, could you ever get all of math under a microscope? Well, it's not that kind of a thing. It's not a thing in the universe. It's just a feature of reality itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, again, me, uh, our physical scientists, sciences are always resting on an underlying bedrock mm -hmm. of philosophical assumption, yeah. you know, logic, mathematics. It's all, uh, that, that stuff is real, mm -hmm. but it's real in a very different way than our yeah. physical stuff. Yeah. That brings us to the, the idea of, of God and of faith. Mm -hmm. If we can say that there is something called math that we can't see or measure or you know, examine the way we do, you know, in the same way, in the that, same way that we would yeah. examine rocks yeah. or, or quasars, yeah. that, but we can all say it exists, that get, there's something that, that called math out there mm. that we can use to make sense mm. of, of the world and everything around us. We can all, then we can then say, well, then there is a God out there yeah. that can explain why things exist. Yeah. That that you know we can explain why there's a beginning, why there's something instead of nothing, that we can't physically measure, mm -hmm. we can't measure, we can't study God the way we study plants or quasars, mm -hmm. but we can say that that He exists, and um, and that brings us to in the end to faith, and that faith is not just something that we hold just for God. I mean, any philosophy that we have mm. is something that we have faith in. Even if it's a purely physical, scientific view of the world where there's nothing else except for what we can see and measure and feel, that is still a philosophy that we have faith in, right? Mm. Yeah, we're, we're trusting in, um, yeah, when, we, when, when, when we, we rely on the reliability of cause and effect in the universe, I mean, or even the, yeah, the, the, the meaningfulness of us trying to think logically about things. Again, mm -hmm. we're dealing with stuff that's outside of physical phenomena, but we're we're trusting this is our mind is like this for a reason. It thinks along these logical logical categories for a reason. Um, but again, I think, and this gets to the third category of philosophy uh, being a science before science, and that it's primarily a love before it is knowledge, mm. and that it's a way of being. It's a habit of being. Um, it's it itself is a philosophical assumption that it is that we can come to know things mm -hmm. and that it's worth knowing instead of not knowing that itself is not something you can't test whether that's true that it is it is better to know than not know it's better to try to understand it, that it, it's it's worth coming to know that our minds and reality are the kinds of things that can come into contact um but philosophy as a as a habit of being a person who believes that, trusts in that, and tries to act it out, that's perhaps the most important meaning of philosophy, that again, whatever your particular uh, area of, of human inquiry is, that faith in the, the, the inherent meaningfulness of things, the knowability of things, mm -hmm. uh, and that it's good to try to understand is a, if it is, is a good philosophical assumption. Um, but it also, it also points, to, it, it points out that to be a good um, scientist you know in any area of human life mm -hmm. there has to be a certain humility there a certain epist epistemological humility a belief that i don't have whatever my my current paradigm is is not perfect i'm always open to there being more mm -hmm. you know all the all of our, our current uh, wildly successful physical technological sciences they came out of that worldview mm -hmm. this this expectation there's always more to understand and to yeah. know um, and so that habit of being philosophy as a virtue in a certain sense is perhaps the most important aspect of it that, mm -hmm. that you can't you can only be a good uh, biologist or chemist or, or physicist to the degree that you have this underlying philosophy as a virtue mm -hmm. that you want to understand you have a certain humility you want to understand but you also want to understand the way other people understand because yeah. they're going to see it in a different way they're going to see features of the universe particularly yeah. the non-physical the philosophical that you don't have and that will round out your view and make you a better knower you know yeah. in the end
Yeah, well, that that is a great that's a great point, a great place to, to wrap this up. Um, but I I hope that we can uh, can come back and we can have more uh, philosophical conversations, um, maybe even looking in deeper into some of those areas of places where the physical sciences and philosophy cross over, mm-hmm. and and especially where we can have some good dialogue uh, around around these these sciences. So, yeah. thank you. Thank you for joining me. Mm-hmm. And thank you for joining us. I want to remind you, if you want to support this channel, head over to Nerdy Catholic Tees. You can get uh, not just tees, mugs there. Got two little examples here. And uh, any purchase you make over there will uh, will support this channel. If you use the coupon code that nerdy Catholic, you will get 10% off of your order. If you missed last week, be sure to go back and watch last week's where episode where we talked to John Mark about where he came from, why he got into philosophy, and and why it was important to him. Thank you for joining us again today. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Shut down.